This is the Canon R50, and it's Canon's most affordable entry-level camera in their R-mount series. It's $680. It's got a 24-megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor. It's got up to 15 frames per second if you're in their e-shutter mode, and for video, it has 4K 30 with no crop. All those specs are good and well, but what I want to find out is if this is the right camera for you. So I'm going to put it through its paces. We're going to be taking portraits in the studio with Tony. We're going to go out around town and get some around town shots like we're on vacation. We're also going to test the autofocus by doing some local wildlife. And we're going to take a little bit of video to see if this is a good functional video camera for you or creators or whatever your needs might be. But first, I want to thank our sponsor, KEH. They have a huge selection of used gear. So if you're thinking about selling your old system and buying into this or one of the other cameras that we recommend today, KEH can make that possible and they make it headache free because they test all gear that they get to make sure anything you buy from them is in perfect working order. They also have a great warranty, 180 days, and they have a return period where you can return your gear if you don't like it for any reason. You can't go wrong. You can't lose with KEH. So thanks, KEH. All right, let's take some pictures in the portrait studio. Now, this is an entry-level camera, so they're not expecting you to do some huge studio setup like this, but I wanted a controlled setting so I could show you the difference between an entry-level camera and my phone portraits. So I'm going to take some pictures in full auto using the camera and I'm using the 18 to 45 kit lens. My phone is the iPhone 14 and I'll use it in portrait mode. The Canon R50's eye detection autofocus locked onto Tony's closest eye automatically. I'm amazed a $680 camera is so smart. You can see that the background blur with a real camera is more natural and more attractive. I'm using this nice light here, but if you wanted to go to KEH and invest in better lighting, the nice thing about this camera is that you could buy a strobe and you can upgrade. So I'm going to add a strobe to this and show you the difference that great lighting can make. Okay, I've done this test with a lot of cameras, but something I just learned is that Canon no longer has regular hot shoe pins, which means it's not going to take my remote flash trigger because they want me to buy some adapter for it. So this must be like how they're blocking out third party lenses. They're really making sure you stay in the Canon system. So I actually can't test this and I give a mark against Canon for this because that's super annoying. One thing the R50 does have though that you don't see much anymore is an on-camera flash. So I'm going to turn off this fill right light here and show you what that looks like. And it looks like a mug shot. Let's take it out of the studio. We'll get some around town shots and I'll tell you more about the features of this camera. We're on staycation in Mystic, Connecticut, where I can show off some of the nice features of this camera. One of them being that it's extremely lightweight and small, easy to carry around. It's under a pound, that's about 300 grams. And also it has some nice features that allow you to get nicer photos. Look at this fully articulating screen. You can put it out, you can show the people in front of you the pictures that you're getting, or you can twist it and shoot down low or twist it this way and shoot up high if you're a little bit of a shorty like I am. And this screen is also functional because it's a touch screen. You can touch what you want to focus on and use that for your autofocus. Can I go see the ducks? I don't have a lens hut, so I'm using my hand. It's raining, which is not great, not ideal. Now it's kind of a dark overcast day and that's a perfect opportunity to mention that these kit lenses, the 18 to 45 and a larger lens that we have, they don't really have a low enough aperture to let in a ton of light. So if you're going to be shooting in a low light situation, like at dusk or dawn or inside a low, a dimly lit restaurant, you might want to invest in lenses that allow more light to come in, like an F1.4 or an F1.2 lens, really anything under what is this? F45 to F63. A little known secret, Tony's afraid of those things. <laughs> now this kit lens is fine if you're taking more wide angle shots, but I brought another lens option that gives you a little more reach if you're interested in shooting a little more telephoto. This is the 18 to 150 F35 to F63. 
and it's going to give you a little more reach but still not great in low light environments. I didn't get great example shots from this location. It was just a really gray flat day and I don't think that that shows off the resolution. We went to Ocean Beach and we got some better light even though it was still overcast and you can see the photos look nice especially wide angle. When you zoom in things are a little bit mushy. It's not the best sharpest lenses but they definitely get the job done. You'd really only have a problem if you were cropping heavily. I took some photos in controlled lighting and you can see that you get plenty of sharpness and this was taken at 24 millimeters at f4. If you want to get the most out of your 24 megapixel sensor you can invest in better lenses when you're ready. It's raining, it's loud, I'm using the vlogging mode with the image stabilization. It doesn't have IBIS so the sensor itself is not stabilized. It's done with software in the camera which means that they have to crop everything to stabilize the footage. I'm at 18 millimeters, but an, I'm on an APS-C sensor, which means it's being cropped. And as you can see, I'm just, you just see in my face, you're not getting a whole view of what's around me or you, there's no proof I have a body even. So we would need super wide lenses for an APS-C, but like I said, there's only two lenses available right now. So if you're super interested in doing like vlogging like this and you're not gonna be on a tripod, it might be challenging. Of course, there's always the option of going with adapters again, but if you're looking at this budget entry-level camera, you might not wanna spend a bunch of money on adapters and other things. There just might be another better option for you. There is. But if you're not vlogging and you are filming yourself on a tripod, it does have the product mode, which means you no longer have to hide behind your products when you're doing a review. It'll figure that out for you. Please don't run away from me. If you're not taking video of yourself and you don't need to hold your camera super close, the video is great. It's 4K 30 uncropped. It looks good. And you can even do slow motion at 120 frames per second, but there's no sound. The, the rain is making it so my touch screen doesn't work. So I have to wipe that off. All right, those ducks are pretty cute, but they're not gonna let me test the wildlife capabilities of this camera. It's boasting 15 frames per second, but I wanna see if the tracking can keep up with that, if the buffering can keep up with that, and if it's able to track while auto-focusing. So let's go find some moving wildlife. We're at Rocky Neck State Park and there's a lot of action going around. I want to show off what this camera is capable of as far as wildlife goes. It has 12 frames per second with the mechanical shutter and 15 with the electronic shutter. So far it seems to be tracking animals really well. I'm getting shots of birds in flight. It's locking on with the intelligent autofocus that's detecting the subject and working really well. One place where you're going to see a few challenges is that the buffer fills up quickly if you're shooting raw files. So if you switch over to JPEG, you can shoot more frames per second before you buffer, but then your editing capability is a little bit more limited. If you have higher contrast situations like a dark bird on a light sky, you might have a difficult time pulling details out. Still, I think it's worth it because when you have a frame rate as high as 15 frames per second, you can get really interesting moments of action like a bird diving to get a fish or other animals moving and that applies to sports too. Another thing to consider if you're avoiding the buffering you won't just hold it down and keep shooting you can manage your buffering by shooting in short bursts and that also helps with the lagging because the viewfinder has a bit of lag and you're going to have to work around that. Those short bursts of shooting are going to help you there too. One thing to consider when you're using the electronic shutter is rolling shutter and that's when the readout of the sensor isn't very fast so you're getting a, like a tilting motion of everything straight in the background like this. It distorts the image a bit and I think you're going to notice it more in sports with people. You're going to notice it some with wildlife too. It's something to consider if you're going to be doing panning shots. Now you might have noticed that I changed to this huge lens. You saw what the other lenses were capable of. Like I said, they weren't great for low light capability. You're not going to get as much zoom, but if you wanted to invest in a bigger zoom lens for wildlife, you could get this 100 to 500 from Canon that's compatible. And so far it's doing a great job. They're working well together and we're getting good shots. We love the Canon 100 to 500, but it's $2,900. You could also get the Canon 600 F11 for $800. Better yet, pick up a Canon EF to RF adapter so you can buy a used Canon EF lens from KEH. They have dozens of them starting at just $350. Use our coupon code NORTHROP1 to get an extra 5% off. That's a deal.
Now the tracking works great when you have a clear background like the sky, but as soon as there are trees in the background and it gets more cluttered, it can jump from your subject onto the background. That can be pretty common with a lot of cameras, but you just have to be mindful of that. Another thing is that I love that this camera is small and easy to carry around when you're doing a round town shooting like we were doing in the previous segment, but when you're shooting wildlife, the heel of my palm keeps hitting these, these buttons and it's changing my settings. This camera is a good beginner camera, but the dials and everything aren't really set up to change the settings quickly like someone more experienced with photography would want. If you were interested in upgrading to glass like this, if you're more serious about the settings, I would actually recommend upgrading to the R10, which is a couple hundred dollars more, but if it's in your budget, you're going to get more bang for your buck, I think. You can get more shots in without buffering. The buttons and the ergonomics are better for more serious shooters, and I think it's a better option. We have some other options for you, too. If you're serious about wildlife, you'll be happier with a Canon DSLR. The Canon 70D is only $314 at KEH, or set up the new 80D for less than $500. We use the 70 Mark II here as our professional wildlife camera for the year. All in all, I think the R50 is a great entry level camera. Uh, it's fully capable. It has some really great technology. I love the back screen that you can control the autofocus and the menus from there, and it's fully articulating. I would recommend this camera for any entry level shooter, and I think it's a great step up, especially from your phone. If you are more serious and you want a better path to upgrading your lenses, you want to get to know your menus better, your settings better, and you want to know more about photography, I would suggest going to a more advanced camera like the R10 or even other used cameras available at KEH. They're our sponsor, but we love them because they offer so many options for used gear. You can get great deals there and it's risk free because they test all of their gear. They give you a really generous return period and also a warranty. So if anything goes wrong, they're gonna take it back within 180 days. So thanks KEH. If you're looking to upgrade, you can go to the description down below. You can buy new gear with, with a coupon code for 5% off. Or if you want to sell your old gear and get money to buy new gear, you can sell your gear to them and use our links down below to get a 5% bonus towards everything you sell to them. If you want to know more about this camera, you can leave questions in the comments down below. If you want other suggestions for cameras, you can ask us and we'll give you some suggestions. Thanks so much.